The flu is a viral respiratory tract infection. Um, classically, uh, the flu presents with uh, cough or cold, almost universally accompanied by a fever, sometimes quite a high fever. Um, in children and babies, it's a little bit tough to identify, but often there are instances where there's headache and muscle aches and general feeling of malaise or fatigue, and those are sort of the classic symptoms. It can be difficult to determine whether your child has the flu or whether they have the common cold. The only true way to know for sure is with a test. Most of us make that diagnosis based on the clinical symptoms, however. And so, to be more clear, if, if your child has the common symptoms associated with influenza, which are the higher fevers, the respiratory tract infection, um, headaches or feeling a malaise, and they, your child has those symptoms at the time where flu is quite common in the community or prevalent in the community, it's likely that your child does have influenza. Flu season is, is generically thought of as somewhere from about the 1st of October, usually until about the end of March. It typically peaks in mid-January to early February, and then by the end of March, we've sort of, we're through the, the lion's share of the influenza illnesses. The flu spreads, as most viruses do, uh, in its person-to-person -person contact. In the wintertime, most of us um, are, are inside, and so we're in closer contact with each other. So if a person were to cough or sneeze, or they had some virus that they were shedding, um, and I come in contact with either those droplet secretions or some, some uh, virus that were on the hand, and, and then I contacted that virus, I would be at risk for getting that virus. In the children's hospital, there are two big patient populations that are at the great, greatest risk for, um, for either contracting the influenza virus or worse yet, suffering the most severe illness associated with the flu. And those two populations are the youngest children, so some would say children less than a year of age or even those children less than six months of age. If you broaden that net a little bit wider, it's most children who are preschool age, so less than five years of age. The second population in the children's hospital that's most at risk is the, is the patient with some secondary chronic illness. And so that might be a child with asthma. That might be a, a child who was formerly a premature baby who has some underdeveloped chronic lung disease. The care is almost always symptomatic. Um, there, there have been many terrific um, sales efforts around uh, cough medicines and cold and flu medicines, but what we know about those medications in children is that they don't actually work all that well. The, main, the mainstay of therapies around treatment for influenza are fever control and hydration. And so, um, if, if a child's having a fever using a, an, a Motrin or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory or using Tylenol uh, to treat those fevers, that, those are probably the, the key critical medications necessary. And then, of course, just trying to keep the child hydrated. A child who the parents suspected had influenza were, um, were either working quite hard to breathe were difficult to arouse or wake up, so the child was lethargic. Um, if the child had evidence of dehydration, which might include um, fewer uh, wet diapers or really decreased drinking, um, if your child was having a high fever, so a high fever might be a temperature greater than 100.5 degrees, and sometimes the fevers can get quite higher than that. Um, Often that fever can be treated and the child can return to a more normal temperature, but if that fever were persistent or quite high, those would all be, all be considerations for taking your child to the emergency department. Most children shed the virus for about seven days, so if I'm clinically symptomatic with the influenza virus today, and today is the first day that I have my symptoms of fever and headache and respiratory tract infection, Somewhere about four to seven days, 
I will shed that virus when I sneeze, when I cough. Um, and so anytime during that seven day period, I'm at risk for spreading that virus or that flu virus to the next, next person that I might come in contact with. The best way to try and prevent transmission of the flu virus is with excellent hand hygiene. Hand washing, hand washing, no matter how simplistic that solution sounds, it works. It's terrifically effective at reducing transmission of the virus. There are some other ways to prevent the spread of the virus. One way would be to, if I were symptomatic, to not go out in public. I can't go to work, or I can't go to church, or I don't go to the grocery store, or my child doesn't go to the school. But clearly, if, if I'm shedding virus and, and I'm a child in the second grade and I go to my school, I'll come in contact with many, many children during that time, and so I'll be at high risk for sharing that virus with other kids. The flu vaccine can be very effective at preventing me from getting any flu symptoms at all or even if I do acquire or come in contact with the flu virus, it's likely that my, my clinical symptoms will be significantly reduced. There is a class of medications that can be used to shorten the duration of the flu symptoms. Those medications are most commonly reserved for patients who are admitted to the hospitals or admitted to the intensive care units or those patients with, with higher risk due to the flu, flu virus. In those patients, we use um, Tamiflu or Relenza, which are the trade names for two anti-flu medications. <laughs>